very good morning dear learners myself gyan prakash yadav associate professor school of management studies uprto u pragraj today i am going to talk on the top on topic human resource management as you know this is a very important topic this is very important discipline of the management because of when we talk about the production process so there are few factors who are responsible for the productive production or the productive process as far as concerned we know that in the production process man money machine material and method these are the important factors who are responsible for the production process in these factor of productions man is very crucial and very important considering the importance of this man the discipline emerges and the name is that the human resource management how we are going to manage this resource today i'm going to talk of, on this topic so before starting the human resource management and discipline first of all i would like to talk about the human resource what is human resource most of the people even talk about this one but exactly what this is so we can say the first it was john r commons the american institutional economics first he coined the term human resources and this was in his book the administration of wealth which was published in 1983 means in 1983 the first term it was used as the human resources by john r commons after that this term got the popularity and nowadays this term is much more popular and we talk about the national view point there are so many different view points and the people think on those view points so the first view point that's a national view point if we talk about the national view point then we can say the human resources may be defined as the knowledge skill creative abilities talents and aptitudes obtained in the population as a nation if i am talking about the human resources so in the population of this country as if talking about the nation of india so the in the india how much knowledge skill creative abilities talents and aptitudes we had in the nation that is the human resources so this was the view of nation wise but we talk about the organization basically the subject or we are concerned much more about the organizations so if we talk about the view point of the an organization so we can say the human resources represent the people at work they are the sum total of the inherent abilities acquired knowledge and skills as exemplified in the talents and aptitude of its employees there are so many employees who are working in the organization and in the talent and aptitude of these employees there are the inherent abilities who are acquired in the form of knowledge and skill according to leon c maginson he told that human resources refers to the total knowledge skill creative abilities talents and the attitude aptitude of an organization's workforce as well as the values attitude and beliefs of the individuals involved maginson explained that the total the total knowledge skill creative abilities talent and aptitude of the of an organization's workforce means if there are n numbers of work people are working there are n numbers of workers are working in the organization so we can even measure the the we can sum the to knowledge of all those skill of those the creative abilities of those the talents of those and aptitude of these people uh, or the these workforce and the values attitude and beliefs actually these three are the much more they are the individual they are the individual they are not much more 
for the organizations, the values, it may be my, in, my own, it may be my own value, it may be my own attitude and the values. By those virtue, a person or me or anyone is working in the organization. So these are the individual's involvement. Here, I, uh, here you can see the picture in which I made the a mathematical presentation of human resource that if we are talking about the human resource of the organization or of the nation or anywhere, so we can say that human resource means HR equal to S plus K plus T plus A plus C and to other O means others. So where HR is the human resources and S for S denotes the skill, K denotes the knowledge, T for talent, A for aptitude, C is capacity and O for others. So in the sum, or in a very brief or concise way, we can say HR equal to S plus K plus T plus A plus C plus O. That is the brief and concise way or the mathematical form of the human resource says. Now, we can say that human resource is not the human beings. It is the knowledge, is the skill, is the talent, aptitude. So, these are the qualities that a human being poses. And now we are talking about the management of these skill, knowledge, talent and aptitude. So that is the discipline, it's a human resource management. Means how we are going to manage this resource that is named as the human resource. So according to Philippo, HRM is planning, organizing, directing and controlling of the procurement, development, compensation, integration, maintenance and suppression of human resources to the end that individual organizational and societal objectives are accomplished. The organization is basically have some objectives and they are ready or they are trying to achieve these objectives. And they may be the societal objectives, they may be the individual or the organizational objectives. And to achieve these objectives, the organization plan, organize, direct and control the procurement, development, compensation, integration and maintenance and separation the, fun uh, the functions of separation. By this, the organization is able to achieve the objectives. Bresler, the another thinker of the management, he defines HRM is a process HRM as a process of acquiring, training, appraising and compensating employees and attending to their labor relations, health and safety and fairness concerns. So this is another definition in which he defined that the process uh, as a process human resource management as a process of acquiring, training, appraising and compensating employees and attending to their labor relations. So after these uh, two definitions, we can say the human resource management is the process of bringing people and organization together so that the goals of each are met. I already told that the, the objective of the organization is to achieve the goals, their, their targets, their, uh, so that's why the human beings, the, an organization, both are working in the collaboration or with the help of each other, they are looking to achieve the objectives. In more definition, we can define that the human resource management may be defined as a set of policies, practices and programs designed to maximize both personal and organizational goal. Means human resource management may be defined as a set of policies. There are so many policies, there are set of policies, they have the practices and the programs who are designed to maximize both personal and organizational goals. The individual employee has also some certain goals and the organization has also some goals and both are working together to achieve their own goals along with each other. So these, this is the definition of human resource management. And by this definition, it is very clear that there are few functions and with the help of these functions, the human resource management works. These functions are procurement practices, development practices, appraisal practices, and compensation practices. Basically, these are the four practices who are taking place in the organization. Even there are uh, different, different thinkers, describes about so many other functions, but 
in a broad sense or in a broad term we can use these four practices the first one that is the procurement practice the, the function procurement function in which first one is the human resource planning this is a very important function that the human resource planning because human resource planning determines the movement of the organization from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position the human resource planning is about to make the plan maybe what is our present position maybe we are we have some uh, we need some more employees so the our de desired position is something different and we want to achieve that position we are looking to for that position so we made a plan that how we can go from its current manpower position to its desired manpower position in which we made a plan that how we can achieve and how we can get the desired position we determine all these things in the human resource planning the next of uh, this function is recruitment recruitment is the process of identifying the sources for prospective candidates and stimulate these candidates to apply for the job in the organization here we start that how we can hire the peoples in the our manpower planning or the human resource planning we had made a plan that how we will move from our desired position for that to fulfill that position the first function that is recruitment which is a process of identifying the competent employees from where we can achieve where from where we can get the competent employees so first we identify those people or those those sources and then we stimulate them to apply for the for that particular job and the next process is after the recruitment the selection starts and the selection is the process of choosing the most suitable candidate for the vacant position in the organization recruitment process takes end with the last date of the application and then we start the process of selection in the process of selection we try to select the most suitable candidate for the post it is possible that or it happens generally there are so many applicants there are so many candidates who are willing to do the job but we have the limited post therefore we are choosing the best one which one is the best employee for our job for our organization and then we go for the selection in the process of selection there are successive hurdles and if an employee is able to achieve these success these uh, hurdles successfully then he will be selected for the particular job the next one that is the placement after selecting the employee the next step that is the placement the employee will be placed in the organization it implies the matching the requirement of a job with the qualification of the candidate placement is understood assigning jobs to the selected candidates once you are selected the candidates then you will place him in the organization what is the requirement of particular work or a particular job and what is the background of that particular employee which is selected so in which department he should be placed this is the work that takes place in the placement process and then the induction because you are placing an employee which is not known to the organization or to the work so he must be introduced with the organization the colleagues the fellow workers and the other rules and regulations of the organization so the induction process takes place in the in this he is introduced with the organization its rules and other things the second one that is the development the major practice that is the development practices in which there are two things the training and the development first of all the training training is the act of increasing the knowledge and skill of an employee for doing a particular job once an employee is recruited selected he is placed he is introduced with the organization and he he starts the work but he don't know about how about the work or how to do the job how to how to do the work so because of he may be a graduate he is not aware about the organization work his of the organization culture so he must be 
trained in his work. What is his work? What is his job? He must be given a training in which the required knowledge and skill for that particular work or that particular job should be given to him. That's why it's an act of increasing the knowledge and skill of the employee. We are increasing the knowledge and skill for that particular job which was not in our employee. So that's why he is saying for the training. Basically, training is uh, designed for the employees or the workers who are directly involved in the production process or who are working in the lower level of the organization. And the development, this is planned, systematic and continuous process of learning and growth by which managers develop their conceptual and analytical abilities to manage. The development is a process, it's a long-term process and basically such type of things are being done for the higher level of people of the, or the higher level of employees who are working on the higher level of the organization's hierarchy. The technical, assist, the technical department or the, the person who are working in the lower level, they must be sound in the technical skill. That's why they are provided training. But those who are working on the top level or the higher level, they are involved in the policy formulation. They are involved in the strategic development. So their conceptual skill must be very strong or it should be very much developed. That's why such type of employees are sent for the development. The programs are organized to develop their skill or their conceptual, to develop their conceptual skill or such type of programs that the managers develop their conceptual and analytical abilities because the business environment is very much dynamic. It's become very much dynamic. So the managers or the top level authority should be very much analytical that how they analyze the environmental changes and what will be the impact on the business. They must be expert of this. That's why the analytical ability is very much required for the top level or the higher level authority. The next function that is the appraisal practices. Once an employee is recruited, selected and trained and is working, what, what is the output and what is the outcome of that particular employee because organization has invested a lot on that employee. So what is the output of that employee? It is very important to check what is his performance. And in this function, we check the performance of the organization. So this is the method by which the job performance of an employee is documented and evaluated. There are different methods of performance appraisal by which we measure the performance of the employee and then we can take the decision whether the performance of the employee is up, uh, up to the mark, it is good or bad or we can decide, we can take the decision whether the appraise, where the performance of the employee is up to the mark. If the performance of the employee is not up to the mark, so there may be some laggings. Either he is struggling with this knowledge, his skill, or he is not taking the interest. So what is the exact reason we try to find out during the appraisal process why the employee is not able to perform up to the mark? And if he is struggling with the skill and knowledge, so it is important, it's a much more important to send back him again the training department and send him for the enhancement of his skill and knowledge. Another term is that is the potential appraisal. It is found that sometimes an employee is very competent. He is not struggling with his knowledge, his competency or his skill, but the output or the performance given by him is poor. So the potential appraiser refers to the identification of hidden skills, talents and abilities of a person which even he may be unaware of. Sometimes it's happened, he is not taking the interest. The employee is not taking the interest and he is not performing up to the mark. Or sometimes he is not aware of his talent, his skill and his capacity and that's why he is performing below or below average. 
So such type of analysis or such type of identification should be in the organization because of if you are motivating such type of employees or providing them uh, better leadership, so such type of employees can perform very much or very good for the organization. The next one that is the compensation practices. The person or the employee who is devoting his time, his energy for the organization and doing the work, so is looking that or he is in the anticipation that he will get some return, some reward in the form of the compensation practices. So in these practices, the wage and salary administration, wage and salary administration refers to the establishment and implementation of sound policies and practices of employee compensation. We made, a, we made some sound policies and practices regarding the employee compensation. There should be fair and justified policies and procedure during the wage and salary administration or providing the compensation to the employees. Incentives, they are other, another compensation practices. Incentives are the additional payment to employees beside the payment of wage and salaries. So, incentives are provided to the employees beside the payment of wage and salary. Wage and salary they are getting and apart from that they are also getting some incentives. There are different different criteria. There are so many criteria on the basis of those criteria the incentives are provided to the employees. Fringe benefits. Fringe benefits include such benefits which are provided to the employee either having long term impact or facilitation of the job. It is found that so many employees are working for a long time. They are associated with the organization for a long time. And they have the faith in the organization. So it's a duty of the organization to recognize these employees and provide them fringe benefits, which is again beside the wage and salary or the incentives. Prerequisite, prerequisite, these are normally provided to managerial personnel either to facilitate their job performance or to retain them in the organization. This is another benefit which is provided in the compensation practices because every organization wants that the competent and a very good employee should be with them. They should be retained by them. To retain such a very competent and good employees, the organization provides such type of benefits and facilitate them such benefits. The last practice, that is the relation practices. If there are few people are working together, so definitely there will be few relations and for the organizational point of view these relations should be cordial if they are the cordial then the organizational growth will be ensured but if the relations are not good or the organization is struggling with these relations so definitely there will be no growth no development and no good practices will be there will be there so for a very good practices it is very important in the organization, the industrial relations should be very cordial. So first one that is the industrial relations, which refers to the all types of relationship between the parties concerned with industry. Whatever the parties are who are concerned with the industry, basically there are employee, employer, and the other peoples who are providing support to the organization, they are also the party. So the other stakeholders, the relationship between all these, that is the industrial relation it should be very cordial, it's very important for the organizational development, the relations should be very cordial. Trade unions, they are also responsible to maintain the industrial relation. The trade unions are a continuous association of wage earners for the purpose of maintaining or improving the condition of their working lives. Trade unions are the association of wage earners. They had made the an association 
to talk with the employer or the top authority that their benefit should be protected. Implied discipline, this also ensures the better industrial relation or the relation practices. If the discipline is maintained in the organization, we are able to maintain the discipline, the relations will be better. So, the implied discipline is the force that prompts an individual or a group to observe the rules, regulations and procedure which are deemed to be necessary to the attainment of objectives. We are looking, as I told, that the organization is looking to achieve the objectives and if there is discipline, means all the employees are following, all the employers are following. So, everyone is following the discipline so they can attain the objectives of the organization. And if the discipline is not followed by anyone, so this will be the adverse situation in the organization. Grievance, any discontent or dissatisfaction, whether exposed or not. Sometimes you will find that the any grievance is exposed and sometimes it is not exposed. Whether valid or not, sometimes the grievances become valid and sometimes they are not valid. But they are arising out of anything connected with the company which an employee thinks, believes or even feels to be unfair, unjust or un and, and inequitable. If an employee is feeling that this is unfair, unjust and unequitable, so definitely there is the grievance. Maybe sometimes it is not fair, maybe sometimes it is not justified. Maybe sometimes it's not valid, but if there are some things are arising, these type of things are arising, there is unfair, unjust and unequitable beliefs are taking place in the mind of the employees or the workers, it should be expelled out, it should be ironed out. The complaints or the grievances, this issue should be solved very in the very, uh, time of his time or in the, as soon as possible, these type of complaints should be avoided these type of uh, things should be, or the grievance problem should be solved as soon as possible to maintain the relations practices. The last one that is the workers' participation in management. Workers' participation management refers to the participation of non-managerial employees in the decision-making process of the organization. Actually, non-managerial employees they are the very important part of the organization. They are involved in the productive production process. They are doing the productive activities. But if they are not involved in the decision making, so this is uh, an adverse situation. This is not a very good situation once the employees are, such type of employees are not involved in the decision making. But if these employees, these non-managerial employees are involved in the decision making, they are already involved in the production process, but if they are involved in the decision making, then they feel motivated and there will be no discontent, there will be no problem of opposition, of, of, to oppose other things. There will be no any issue to oppose the things. So they will be very happy and they will coordinate with the top level or the other part of the other uh, sections of the organization and they will do better, they will do their best to achieve the organizational goals. So, these are the few practices of human resource management. So, today I talk just an introductory lecture of the human resource management. What is human resource management and what are the practices, what are the functions who are taking place in this discipline. Thanks to all of you for listening me and in the next lecture I will be with the a new topic. Thanks. Thanks to all of you.